Hello everyone and welcome back to my Sandbox EDB series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.5. In this episode, the EDB is going to launch the core of the Duna station, which will attach itself to the Orion 1 space plane already in orbit around Duna, thereby giving the Orion 1 space plane some much needed electric charge input as well as some fuel. The main body of this rocket is actually the station core. The bottom of it with the main sail will detach and uh, be deorbited. And of course it has two SRBs on the side to give it an extra boost initially. We are here at T minus 15, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff. Liftoff of the Duna Station Core to Duna. This is obviously a no-frills launch, and while the EB expects that the Station Core will have enough Delta V to transfer to Duna once it reaches orbit around Kerbin, it may not have enough to actually rendezvous with the Orion 1 space plane, so another refueler might be sent. There go the SRBs, and they do have parachutes on them for recovery. And uh, you can see that after the mainsail stage there, there is a stage of three aerospikes that will proceed to push this up to orbit and there goes the mainsail stage it is decoupled and the fuel in the payload is unlocked and now it is proceeding to orbit once the station core reaches its target apoapsis the nose cone will decouple exposing the docking port which will dock with the Orion 1 space plane and here we go apoapsis is getting up there and engine shutdown, approximately 100 kilometers. The station core is in space, and so the nose cone will be decoupled. Off it goes. And then after sidestepping the nose cone, the station core proceeded to complete its orbit at apoapsis. You can see it's carrying quite a bit of mod propellant, and so there's got to be no problem maneuvering to docking once it reaches Duna. However, as it uh, finally reached orbit, the EDB calculated the delta V still remaining on the vehicle, and it was about 1700 meters per second, which the EDB judged was not enough to immediately transfer it over to Duna. Uh, it would be able to transfer to Duna and potentially make orbit, but not make a rendezvous with the Orion 1 space plane. But in any case, the solar panels were successfully deployed, the radiator deployed, and it was ready to go. The EDB had of course planned for this eventuality and had a refueler rocket ready. And this is that rocket. It is carrying a full load of liquid fuel and oxidizer. It is based on a similar format as another refueler rocket that was meant for the Orion 1 space plane and the station, but that one carried primarily liquid fuel. And so here we go. Its uh, boosters are disposable in this case. It is uh, five mainsails altogether on the base stage, four of them on the boosters. Here's T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff. We have liftoff of the refueler rocket to the Duna Station core. Now this refueler rocket is meant for general purposes and can lift the main fuel load over to the moon or Minmus as well, and potentially even to Duna. In this case, for this mission, it'll obviously have fuel left over in the second stage, and that fuel will simply be transferred over to the Duna Station core as spare fuel. It will retain enough fuel to deorbit itself after the mission. And so here we are, going transonic here, now past the speed of sound. The rocket performing excellently. The previous iteration of this refueler actually launched on the Taurus C launcher and there is still concern about the safety of the Taurus C launcher which is why it wasn't used here as we're getting ready for booster separation. And there we go, booster separation is successful and the center mainsail continues on. There was uh, fuel cross feeding between the boosters and the center stack and so the center is still full at booster separation. There we go, we've got an apoapsis at 160 kilometers now. Plenty of fuel left in 
the core stage. And so it's going to complete orbit here. There we go. Uh, it does not look like we're in a good position for phasing yet. It is overburning in order to to uh, phase with the target. And the core stage, despite having some fuel left over, will just uh, separate and deorbit itself now. You can see uh, burner thrusters and a controller at the top there meant for this purpose. There we go, and has sidestepped the payload and is deorbiting. Potentially, uh, parachutes could be placed on this stage if the EDB had reason to believe that it could survive re entry. And so here we go, Duna Station Core with the second stage, a skipper engine there. And the docking port is opened and ready. And after a few orbits, it was ready to rendezvous with the Duna Station core. While only a minor adjustment was necessary in the prograde retrograde direction, the EDB decided to make a more substantial burn to correct the inclination. And uh, that in order to get closer to the Duna Station core on this rendezvous burn. Subsequent burns were necessary to uh, further refine the rendezvous. The gap was actually a little bit frustrating and surprising for mission planners, but ultimately the refueler managed to get within 2.5 kilometers and reignited the skipper engine in order to match speeds with the Duna Station core. And after killing the ex excess velocity, moved towards the station at a safe velocity. And here we go with the approach within 350 meters, now within 150 meters. Since the refueler has a standard sized docking port, it will have to dock on the side of the Duna Station core rather than on the, the main docking ports, the senior sized docking ports that is, including the one that the Ryan 1 space liner will dock on. And here we go, uh, really closing now, a little bit fast there. Uh, it looks like everything is well in hand. And awaiting connection here. There we go. The refueler is docked and fuel transfer is underway. The refueler will transfer all its fuel except for a center tank. So you'll see all the tanks clear except for a single hidden tank within the body of the refueler core. There we go. That tank is for deorbiting the vessel and its fuel is transferred into the skipper stage. Normally, of course, the skipper stage is meant to fling this out to Minmus or the Moon. And so uh, it would actually just be the refueler portion itself that would deorbit itself. It has uh, small ant engine thrusters in order to do that, as well as its RCS system, of course. And there we have it, the retro burn, and this will deorbit itself. It will not be recovered though. Next up, the transfer for the station core was plotted, and it turned out that it would require a minor mid course adjustment, very small. Altogether, the estimated burn to reach Duna would be about 1,150 meters per second, including the mid course correction. And there is the target orbit. And here it goes, the Duna Station core lighting its three aerospike engines, using its reaction wheel to maintain its course. The aerospike engines do not gimbal. And coming to the end of the burn here, the existing maneuver was cancelled out, so it's showing a bad number for the mid-course plane change. The mid-course plane change will be replotted. There we have a, an approach indication on the Duna side and now the mid-course correction we plotted again and at 16.6 uh, .6 meters per second it uh, will get the Duna station core close to the target orbit and so it goes leaving Kerman SOI en route to Duna SOI and its eventual docking with the Orion 1 space plane
With its huge solar panels, electric charge was not concerned and it didn't lose any charge on its way to the mid course correction point. And here comes the plane change maneuver after the station core turns to the maneuver node. Very nimble station core, it's actually quite light without being overburdened with fuel. Correction taking place here. And just about wrapped up, let's take a look at the resulting orbit on the Duna side. Uh, looks like we're not getting a very clear indication. Yeah, indeed, uh, the resulting orbit seems to be difficult to calculate. So, the Duna Station core had to bear with some suspense as it approached Duna. Would it have a good orbital pass? Uh, we are now in Duna SOI. The, the orbit is not being indicated yet. Waiting on the result here. There we go, there we go. Uh, periapsis of 525 kilometers uh, should be all right. It will need some tweaking. Mission planners were able to bring it to 106.7 kilometers and at periapsis also were able to correct the longitude of ascending node to get a rendezvous with the target. And you can see the rendezvous forming up right there. So a potential rendezvous with the target on a single burn as it makes orbit around Duna. So this is the minor correction necessary to get to the desired periapsis. There we go, that should do it. And now the approach to Duna. The burn at periapsis will be a 1093 meter per second burn and so you see that without the refueling uh, this would not have had enough to rendezvous with the Orion 1. It may have had enough to get orbit around Duna, especially if a mild aerobrake was used, but even without an aerobrake it would have been able to get into orbit, but certainly not matching the orbit of the Orion 1 space liner. Uh, here we go. After the plot had burned, there was some discrepancy, and so adjustments had to be made using RCS to fine tune it. And uh, here we see the end of that RCS burn, bringing the separation between the two crafts to well within 10 kilometers. Uh, there we go. 7.8, well, somewhere around 8 kilometers. And at that point, the Duna Station core matched velocities with the Orion 1 space liner and then proceeded to turn towards the space liner in order to make its approach. And again, uh, most of the maneuvering has to be done with the onboard reaction wheels. There is no gimbling on the engines. And as necessary, the station core also used RCS to stabilize itself. It did have plenty of mob repellent. For the Orion 1 Space Liner's part, it unlocked one of its batteries, the one with less electric charge. There we go. And began to turn towards the target, controlling from its large tail docking port. So control is transferred. It couldn't use any of its mod propellant. The mod propellant tank was locked anyway, but uh, there was no point trying to use RCS to turn the Orion 1, so it turned very slowly. Meanwhile, the station core used RCS quite liberally in order to make adjustments to its approach. Here we have the completion of the turn from the Orion 1 space liner, again using its internal reaction wheels instead of RCS. And here the Duna Station core is within 100 meters now, approaching quite quickly. All lined up from, from all angles, approaching 60 meters now. Okay, we're in the final phases of the docking, everything appears to be lined up. From this angle, it seems like the Duna Station Core is quite large compared to the Orion 1 Space Liner. That is not true. The Space Liner is quite large compared to the Station Core itself, as it was compared to Hoffman Station. There we have a docking, and perhaps we'll get a better view of the situation. There you are. And so you can see the relative size between the Orion 1 Space Liner and the Station Core. Further modules will, of course, be added to the Duna Station, and the station has not been named yet. 
Uh, it of course needs some ISRU facilities and crew quarters. Uh, right now, the Orion 1 Space Line is providing the only crew quarters on board the station, as the station turns the entire facility around and will retro burn to bring the orbit down into a tighter orbit around Duna. That's the first order of business here, and it manages that fairly well, using, of course, its uh, mod propellant, which is depleting, by the way. Uh, quite a lot less mod propellant than we started off with. And there goes the apoapsis down into a nice tight orbit, ended up at uh, 160 by 75 kilometer orbit. Not circular, but uh, probably useful for for rendezvous in the future. A polar orbit, of course. There is no clear word from the EDB about what its future Duna plans will be. Of course, we've mentioned that there are some obvious station modules that will be added, but Duna also requires a scanner of some sort that may be in the form of a module to the station, or it may be an independent satellite around Duna. Uh, the station is, of course, already in a polar orbit, but perhaps not high enough for the EDB's plans. Uh, there are, of course, colony possibilities. But we'll have to see. The EDB also has to work on developing a recoverable launcher that can stand in the place of the Taurus C and launch the heavy payloads to Duna. But for now, we'll say thank you for watching this presentation of the launch of the Duna Station Core to Duna and its arrival there and docking with the Orion 1 Space Liner. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time.